the good news about all this is that the scientists who've been studying motivation have given us this new approach. It's an approach built much more around intrinsic motivation, around the desire to do things because they matter, because we like it, because they're interesting, because they're part of something important. And to my mind, that new operating system for our businesses revolves around three elements, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy, the urge to direct our own lives, mastery, the desire to get better and better at something that matters, and purpose, the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. These are the building blocks of an entirely new operating system for our businesses. I want to talk today only about autonomy. In the 20th century, we came up with this idea of management. Management did not emanate from nature. Okay? Management is an in, it's, it's like, it's not a tree, it's a television set. Okay? Somebody invented it. And it doesn't mean it's going to work forever. Management is great. Traditional notions of management are great if you want compliance. But if you want engagement, self-direction works better. Let me give you some examples of some kind of radical notions of, of self-direction. Um, and what this means, you, see, you, see, you don't see a lot of it, but you see the first stirrings of something really interesting going on. Because what it means is it means paying people adequately and fairly, absolutely. Getting the issue of money off the table and then giving people lots of autonomy. Let me give you some examples. How many of you have heard of the company Atlassian? Okay, it looks like less than half. Um, Atlassian is an Australian software company, and they do something incredibly cool. A few times a year, they tell their engineers, go for the next 24 hours and work on anything you want as long as it's not part of your regular job. Work on anything you want. So the engineers use this time to come up with a cool uh, patch of code, to come up with an elegant hack. Then they present all of these stuff that they've developed to their uh, teammates, to the rest of the company, in this wild and woolly all-hands meeting at the end of the day. And then, being Australians, everybody has a beer. They call them FedEx days. Why? Because you have to deliver something overnight. It's pretty, it's not bad. It's a, it's a huge trademark violation, but it's pretty clever. Um, <laughs> that one day of intense autonomy has produced a whole array of software fixes that might never have existed. And it's worked so well that Atlassian has taken it to the next level with 20% time, done famously at Google, where engineers can work, spend 20% of their time working on anything they want. They have autonomy over their time, their task, their team, their technique. Okay, radical amounts of autonomy. And at Google, as, most of, as many of you know, about half of the new products in a typical year are birthed during that 20% time. Things like Gmail, Orkut, Google News. Let me give you an even more radical example of it. Something called the Results Only Work Environment, the ROW, created by two American consultants in place at about a dozen companies around North America. In a row, people don't have schedules. They show up when they want. They don't have to be in the office at a certain time or any time. They just have to get their work done. How they do it, when they do it, where they do it, is totally up to them. Meetings in these kinds of environments are optional. What happens? Almost across the board. Productivity goes up, worker engagement goes up, uh, worker satisfaction goes up, turnover goes down. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. These are the building blocks of a new way of doing things. Now, some of you might look at this and say, hmm, that sounds nice, but it's utopian. And I say, nope. I have proof. In the mid-1990s, Microsoft started an encyclopedia called Encarta. They had deployed all the right incentives. All the right incentives. They paid professionals to write and edit thousands of articles. Well-compensated managers oversaw the whole thing to make sure it came in on budget and on time. A few years later, another encyclopedia got started. Different model, right? <laughs> Do it for fun. No one gets paid a cent or a euro or a yen. Do it because you like to do it. Now, if you had, just 10 years ago, if you had gone to an economist anywhere and said, hey, I got these two different models for creating an encyclopedia, if they went head-to-head, -head, who would win? Ten years ago, you could not have found a single sober economist anywhere on planet Earth <laughs> who would have predicted the Wikipedia model. This is the titanic battle between these two approaches. This is the Ali Frazier of motivation, right? This is the thrilla in Manila, all right? Intrinsic motivators versus extrinsic motivators. Uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose versus carrots and sticks, and who wins? 
intrinsic motivation, autonomy, mastery, and purpose in a knockout. Let me wrap up. There's a mismatch between what science knows and what business does, and here's what science knows. One, those 20th century rewards, those motivators we think are the natural part of business, do work, but only in a surprisingly narrow band of circumstances. Two, those if-then rewards often destroy creativity. Three, the secret to high performance isn't rewards and punishments, but that unseen intrinsic drive, the drive to do things for their own sake, the drive to do things because they matter. And here's the best part. Here's the best part. We already know this. The science confirms what we know in our hearts. So if we repair this mismatch between what science knows and what business does, if we bring our motivation, notions of motivation, into the 21st century, if we get past this lazy, dangerous ideology of carrots and sticks, we can strengthen our businesses, we can solve a lot of those candle problems, and maybe, maybe, maybe we can change the